Welcome back to The Gossip Historian, where we spill tea like it's 1773. Think history is dull and boring? Well, think again. We're here to add a little sparkle and drama to your day with our juicy tales from the past. Today, we're diving headfirst into the tumultuous waters of royal rivalry and religious strife. Buckle up, because we're traveling back to the 16th century, a time when crowns were coveted, thrones were threatened, and queens were quick to quarrel. We're about to unfold a story of power, betrayal, religion, and of course, royal drama. So grab your teacups, sit back, and let's jump into the fascinating world of Queen Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots. Stay tuned because we promise you, this feud is hotter than your freshly brewed English tea. Did you know that the feud between Queen Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots was more intense than any modern day Twitter feud? Yeah, you heard it right. The gloves came off, the crowns were tilted, and the royal tea was spilled in the 16th century, way before social media even came into existence. Now let's introduce you to the heavyweight champions of this royal smackdown. In the right corner we have Queen Elizabeth I, the red-haired virgin queen, known for her wit, intelligence, and a slight aversion to the institution of marriage. And in the left corner, we have Mary Queen of Scots, cousin to Liz, who was a little too fond of husbands, having had three of them. These two queens were more than just family. They were rivals, and boy did they have some serious issues to sort out. The royal beef between them started when Mary, freshly widowed from her first husband, returned to Scotland to claim her throne. But Elizabeth, ever the savvy queen, didn't quite roll out the red carpet for her cousin. Their rivalry wasn't just a family feud, it was a political power struggle of epic proportions. Both were ruling queens in a man's world, which in itself was a recipe for drama. But the real kicker? Religion. Elizabeth was Protestant and Mary was Catholic, and in 16th century Europe, this was a big deal. Think of it like being a die-hard fan of two opposing football teams, but with a lot more at stake. Mary wanted Elizabeth's throne, believing she had a better claim due to her Catholic faith and blood ties to the previous monarch. Elizabeth, however, was not about to hand over her crown and scepter without a fight. The tension between them was thicker than the royal pudding. So it seems our queens were throwing more than just shade. They were tossing around claims to the throne, accusations of treason and religious arguments like they were going out of style. Stay tuned to see how this royal rivalry unfolds. Will it be a checkmate or a stalemate? Only time will tell. Now, let's rewind to the very beginning. Was Elizabeth destined for greatness, or did she just luck out? Well, her birth was a bit like a royal soap opera. Born to King Henry VIII and his second wife, Anne Boleyn, Elizabeth was third in line for the throne right behind her half-brother Edward and her half-sister Mary. But talk about family drama! Her mother, Anne Boleyn, was executed when Elizabeth was just two years old. Yikes! Apparently King Henry was not a fan of the till death do us part clause. He accused Anne of high treason, which is just a fancy way of saying he wanted a new wife. Poor Elizabeth was declared illegitimate, which is like being unfriended by your dad in the 16th century. But did it stop her? No way, she was like, I've got this, and boy did she prove everyone wrong. Talk about a rough start, right? But hey, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So, how does one go from being the child of a disgraced queen to ruling the kingdom? Well, buckle up, because Elizabeth's journey to the throne is more twisted than a Shakespearean play. First off, let's not sugarcoat it. Elizabeth's childhood was a hot mess. Her mother, Anne Boleyn, got the chop when Elizabeth was just two. After that, she was declared illegitimate and basically tossed aside like last season's fashion. And you thought your childhood was rough. But then, plot twist. Her half-sister Mary Tudor takes the throne and things go from bad to worse. Mary, not exactly winning the Sister of the Year award, locks Elizabeth up in the Tower of London on suspicion of conspiracy. Talk about sibling rivalry. However, Elizabeth was not one to sit around and mope. In the Tower, she brushed up on her needlework and plotted her next moves. She even managed to charm her jailers. Who knew embroidery could be so useful? Then there's the scandalous bit. Enter Thomas Seymour, the dashing and ambitious uncle of her future husband. Thomas, old enough to be her father, took a fancy to young Elizabeth. The rumors were so spicy that they'd put today's tabloids to shame. But Elizabeth, ever the shrewd one, played her cards right. She avoided a scandal, or at least a scandal that could cost her the throne. She denied everything and managed to keep her reputation intact. She was like, scandal, what scandal? And when her sister Mary Tudor kicked the bucket, Elizabeth finally got her moment. She ascended to the throne and began her reign as one of England's most iconic monarchs. So there you have it. 
That's how Elizabeth went from being the forgotten princess to the Queen of England. She navigated through scandals, imprisonment, and family drama, all while keeping her eyes on the prize. Clearly, Elizabeth didn't let a little scandal stop her from getting that crown. And that, my friends, is what we call a power move. Ever heard of the term, the Virgin Queen? Well, it wasn't because she loved olive oil. Now, Elizabeth I, our feisty red-headed monarch, made the rather unusual decision to remain unmarried and childless. And no, it wasn't because she couldn't snag a date. In fact, she had more suitors than a royal bachelorette show. From the Duke of Alençon to Ivan the Terrible, yes, the Terrible, our queen was a hot ticket in the marriage market. But Liz was like, nah, I'm good. Her decision to stay single wasn't just a personal one. It was a political strategy. She was playing the Game of Thrones before it was cool. By keeping potential husbands and their countries guessing, she maintained a delicate balance of power. It was a masterstroke of political maneuvering. She was the ultimate queen of suspense, a royal cliffhanger, if you will. But let's dish some royalty. There were rumors, oh yes, juicy rumors. The favorite one? Her alleged affair with Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester. Dudley was her favorite, and they were inseparable. He was married but his wife conveniently died under mysterious circumstances. Most people thought Dudley offed his wife to marry the queen, but Liz was like, thanks but no thanks. Despite the gossip, Elizabeth stuck to her guns. She declared herself married to England, and she wasn't about to cheat on her country with some man. She was a queen who didn't need a king to rule. Instead of a wedding ring, she wore the crown, and thus she became known as the Virgin Queen. It was a title she wore with pride, a symbol of her independence and strength, a testament to her dedication to her people. But let's be honest, being the Virgin Queen also meant she didn't have to share the remote control or put up with snoring, so perhaps she was onto something. So, no Prince Charming for our Queen, but she sure had her share of knights in shining armor. All good things must come to an end, and so did the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the end of an era, the grand finale of a reign that was anything but ordinary. Queen Elizabeth I, known as the Virgin Queen, ruled England for over 44 years, a time that saw England's transformation from a nation in crisis to a global power. Her rule, often referred to as the Elizabethan era, was a time of prosperity and cultural bloom. But like every good party, it had to wind down at some point, and wind down it did, on March 24, 1503, when our dear Liz breathed her last. Now, you might be wondering, what did she leave behind besides a closet full of extravagant gowns and a collection of wigs that would make any drag queen green with envy? Well, quite a lot actually. Her reign marked a golden age for England. She was the queen who put England on the global map, not just as a country that existed, but as a force to be reckoned with. She was an astute ruler, making decisions that would shape the future of England. She saw the importance of a strong navy, and under her rule, England defeated the Spanish Armada, a victory that still rings in the annals of history. And let's not forget her contribution to arts and culture. Under Queen Elizabeth's rule, the arts flourished. William Shakespeare ever heard of him? Yep, he was her contemporary. And the English language? It expanded and evolved during her reign. So the next time you're using some fancy words or watching a Shakespearean play, you know who to thank. But perhaps what's most notable about Queen Elizabeth I is her resilience and determination. She was a woman who ruled in a man's world, and she did it with grace, wit, and an iron will. She held her own, and for that, she gets a tip of the hat. And just like that, the era of the Virgin Queen came to an end, but hey, she did leave us with some killer quotes. So, what can we take away from the life of Queen Elizabeth I? Well, folks, it seems to boil down to a few key points. First, it's always a good idea to keep your enemies close, but your cousins closer especially if they're eyeing your throne with a little too much enthusiasm. Second, if you're ever feeling a little lackluster, just start a scandal. Nothing spices up an otherwise dull Tuesday like an illicit love affair or a secret spy network. And let's not forget, Queen Elizabeth Voss was the original feminist icon. Who needs a husband when you've got an entire kingdom to run? I mean, who has the time between dodging assassination attempts and managing international diplomacy? But perhaps the most important lesson from our dear Elizabeth is that, at the end of the day, drama is queen. And in her case, she was the queen of drama. In the end, Queen Elizabeth I showed us that you don't need a man to rule a kingdom. But a good scandal? Now that's a royal necessity. As we wrap up our historical journey through the life of Queen Elizabeth I, let's not forget the key takeaways from her reign. She ruled with an iron fist and a sharp wit, 
always one step ahead of her rivals and adversaries. Always remember, folks, a queen isn't defined by her marital status, but by her ability to rule her kingdom with strength and wisdom. And Elizabeth did just that, with a sprinkling of scandal and intrigue to keep everyone on their toes. So, next time you're faced with a challenge, channel your inner Elizabeth. Embrace the drama, outwit your foes, and rule your world like the queen you truly are. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more juicy, scandalous lessons in history.